Welcome back. This is episode 8 of the My Pet Care video show. In today's show, we'll hear some advice about selecting and caring for pet fish, and we'll see what's involved if you want to travel with your pet overseas. We'll watch a couple of baby elephants in a paddling pool, we'll hear about a cat whose head appeared to be falling off, and I'll offer you my quick pet, pet care tip for this episode. I'm John Sheridan, and this is the show that helps everyone with an interest in the management and care of companion animals and especially pet owners just like you to keep your animals fit, happy and healthy members of the family. Here in Britain, fish are now the third most popular pet after dogs and cats. According to a study conducted by the Pet Food Manufacturers Association, 16% of pet owners now own fish Cats are in the number two spot at 19%. Dogs remain the most popular in 23% of UK households. Fish can be ideal pets for people who don't have the time or space for a high maintenance dog or cat. They're easier and less expensive to feed and care for, but they do require a proper environment and some knowledge about their management and, cat and care. They're quiet. You don't have to worry about upsetting the neighbors. They come in an infinite variety of size, shape and colors. You don't have to take them for a walk every day. They don't need a litter tray and they'll never leave a, leave a mess on your brand new carpet. Here's a clip in which Christopher Shirky, a vet in practice in Illinois, offers some advice about selecting and caring for pet fish. People own fish for many reasons. Studies have shown that people who watch fish have lower stress levels. They're also ideal pets for people with space limitations or allergies to other common pets. Fish come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Saltwater and freshwater species, they can be kept in large and small aquariums or even outside in ponds. No matter where your pet fish live, their health is determined by the water quality of their environment. Saltwater fish need to be kept in saltwater and freshwater fish need to be kept in freshwater. Water should be filtered to remove any waste products and to keep the temperature at a suitable degree as fish are sensitive to sudden water temperature changes. Include plants and decorative structures inside the aquarium to make the environment appealing to look at while also stimulating your fish at the same time. Many people prefer to enjoy their fish outside and often have the larger species of fish like koi. Koi come in a variety of colors and sizes. They have mellow dispositions to get along with a variety of different species of fish. Koi are also omnivorous and they can eat a variety of foods. Under ideal conditions, koi species can live for over 30 years. If you keep your fish in a pond outside, you need to protect them from the temperature and environmental extremes that can put their health at risk. As with any living thing, fish have specific needs and for the first time fish owners, freshwater fish are generally less expensive and their aquariums are easier to maintain than saltwater fish. When introducing a new fish to your existing fish, make sure you know the species. Some species of fish do not get along with other fish and may fight or eat them. New healthy fish may still carry parasites or bacterial diseases and even viral diseases. These fish should be quarantined for a month in a separate tank before being introduced to existing fish. If you notice any changes in your fish, it's best to contact an aquatic veterinarian. Check the water quality and temperature to make sure it's normal first. Check your fish for wounds, discoloration and growths. You may also notice missing scales. This may be a sign of fighting with other fish. Look at the respiratory rate, clarity of its eyes, or abnormal behaviors such as unusual swimming patterns or sluggishness. Veterinarians may recommend that you separate a sick fish to minimize it passing the illness to other fish. An aquatic veterinarian can come to the house to observe the fish in their environment and rule out any environmental causes, but sometimes it's necessary for you to transport your fish to the veterinary clinic. All species of fish need a loving and responsible owner to care for them. Make sure you pick the right pet for your family. Now for the website, search for this episode. If you're planning to go abroad on holiday or relocating overseas, and if you have pets in the family, you'll need to make some plans about whether or not to take them with you. You'll have to check with the embassy of your destination country to see whether there are any specific vaccination, documentation or other requirements before your pet can travel. If you live in the UK, you'll need to be aware of the rules of the UK Pet Travel Scheme if you plan to take your pet abroad and then return to the UK without the need for quarantine. There'll be plenty to think about, and it might make sense to contact an organisation which specialises in arranging 
international travel for animals, particularly one which belongs to the IPATA, that's the International Pet and Animal Transportation Association. Here's a clip from one of them, and which offers some advice about what's involved. Airlines these days attach you know, huge importance to the carriage of animals. It's a job that must be done right at all times. Our kennels in Cattery are uh, based at Heathrow, uh, where ultimately the journey starts from. So we're able to minimise the, the length of time uh, any animal would be in its container. When a customer decides to use Air Pets, we can collect their pets from any UK home address or they can bring them here to our facilities near Heathrow. When a customer arrives at Air Pets, they come to reception, their individual consultant will come out and meet them. They will then check all their paperwork for the country that they're flying to, import permits, export certificates and vaccinations. And then the kennel maid will come up, take the dog or cat, whatever you have, down to the kennels. And you can go down with them to settle them in, ensure that you're happy with everything and talk to the kennel maid about any worries you have. Then every single animal before they fly will have to see our vet. We visit uh, air pets every day. On a daily basis we come out here and we, we check these animals over to make sure that they are fit to fly. We concentrate on, on a few body systems. It's very important these guys have healthy hearts and lungs to, to manage the trip. We're also going to look through their coats uh, in their ears, uh, looking closely specifically for parasites. Uh, one thing they're, they're very tight on is they don't want uh, any bugs, any parasites leaving this country uh, and going elsewhere around the, around the world. So biosecurity is very important. Identification is also crucial. Many countries will insist that we identify the animal very accurately. and Typically that's done uh, by describing breed and age, etc. But also taking note of their personal identity chip number. We scan that microchip number and put it on their paperwork. Once the animals are cleared for travelling, they are measured for a travel container. These high quality, robust crates are built to order, on site by Air Pets carpenters and are designed to be exactly the right size for the maximum comfort of the animal in transit. Then we load the animal onto our van for the short uh, journey to Heathrow and some airlines have dedicated check-in areas for large animals and then there's a questionnaire that we have to go through, just an acceptance uh, check of the animal and then it's placed in a livestock room ready for loading. So if you're planning to travel overseas with your pet, take a look at the IPATA website and the website of one of its members, such as airpets.com. You'll be glad that you did. Now let's smile with a pet, or in this case, a couple of baby elephants in a paddling pool. Now for my quick pet care tip for this episode. Late one evening many years ago when I was the duty on-call vet, a client phoned in panic to say his cat was in pain and it looked as though his head was falling off. We arranged to meet at the practice and at first glance it looked as though he was right. There appeared to be a gaping hole on one side of his neck, almost as large as the cat's head. To cut a long story short, we had to anaesthetise the patient discovered that the problem was a huge abscess which had probably originated as a bite from another cat. The cat made an uneventful recovery but it took a long time, intensive treatment, much nursing and home care before we could be sure that the infection had cleared. You might imagine that a single bite from a cat on another cat or on its owner might be painful but otherwise of little significance. You'd be wrong. Here's a clip from Bamfield Veterinary Hospital which explains why. Bite wounds, especially bites, but sometimes scratches as well, can develop into a serious infection called an abscess. As a pet parent, it is important to take your pet to a veterinarian if you suspect he or she may have been in a fight. 
Because cats' teeth are long and narrow and their coat is thick, bite wounds leave deep punctures that are often difficult to detect. These wounds often scab over at the skin's surface, setting up a perfect environment for the development of an abscess. An abscess is an infected wound that has been scabbed so that a pocket of pus forms under the skin. These abscesses, which can contain a large amount of pus, poison the blood, kill the skin, and can even kill the patient if left untreated. It's important to note that because of the type of bacteria in a cat's mouth, humans are also at risk for serious infections from cat bites. Most cats will go to great lengths to avoid a fight with another. This desire to resolve a conflict and avoid injury will likely result in a lot of hissing, spitting, and loud vocalization. Similar to physical fights in people, if one of the participants does not back down, a fight will likely result. Spaying and neutering before sexual maturity will significantly cut down on roaming behavior and the desire to fight with others over territory, mates, and food. So what's my quick pet care tip? Well, it's this. If you were ever bitten by a cat, don't delay and seek medical advice quickly. If you suspect that your cat has been involved in a fight with another cat, particularly if you can see evidence of any puncture wounds, exactly the same advice holds true. Don't delay and seek professional veterinary advice as soon as you're able. You'll be glad that you did. Well, that's about it for now. I'm John Sheridan, and this is the My Pet Care video show. See you next time. Mm -hmm.